I want to give you a word from uh, Yom Aleph, quick, a brief word. And I was thinking quite a bit about this portion that we're coming in, and I hope everybody uh, noticed the pattern. I'm teaching a little bit today, this morning, from uh, the Besora, uh, according to uh, COVID-19 for a couple of minutes, and 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 we've been talking in a theme that has been really strong on my heart is this theme of a spiritual warfare. And when you you read the Besora according to COVID-19, you're going to notice that I speak a lot about the Klipot, the spirit of Edom, that have to be shed in the last days, not just from the Messiah, but he means shed from each and every one of us. Now, if you look at your life today, and if you look at any, any, any of us, we all have what's called a klipa. A klipa is the things that we are struggling with. It can be a fleshly struggle, it can be spiritual struggle, it can be a physical struggle, but we all have a piece of Edom, a piece of Isav, uh, uh, inside of us. And we even see that this struggle between Yaakov and, and Esau starting in the womb and, and they're struggling in the womb and, and they're fighting in the womb. It's a picture of you and I who are fighting and, and we also learn that when Yaakov does what, it's, what he's supposed to be doing, Esau have to be quiet. Esau cannot overcome Yaakov if Yaakov is supposed to do doing what he's supposed to do. Now, in last week portion, it says Vayetze Yaakov. We talked about it last yesterday on the Shabbat about Jacob going and leaving the place called Be'er Sheva, Be'er Sova, a place of fullness. He think he is full because he's being spoon fed, spoon fed. And some of you have been spoon fed for a long time. You have gotten this salvation centric message when people think that this is the gospel somebody wrote me read the the besora according to covid 19 said i have a problem with the besora covering covid 19 he said the problem i'm having with the besora according to covid 19 you did not put the sinner prayer in the end of the day in the end of the book you did not put the sinner prayer for people to accept jesus christ and i said wait excuse me where did yeshua said in the scripture that one have to give the sinner prayer in order to walk with him where does it say that it does not say it anywhere in the scripture yeshua said pick up the cross walk with the cross daily he he says uh, paul says uh, 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 out your salvation in and fear and trembling. Uh, Moses said, Tzedek, Tzedek, Tzedek. We're seeing a very different uh, picture on how we are to walk these things out. And this key of understanding all of this is the Vayetze Yaakov. Vayetze Yaakov. Yaakov started the journey outside comfort zone. You, without a doubt, today are outside your comfort zone. If you are not raising Judaism, and you are coming out today, you are in a process of coming out. In the book, I dedicated a chapter. I encourage everybody to read the chapter carefully. And by the way, when you read the book, don't miss a single page, not a single word. You need to read the book from Aleph to Taf, word for word, because it's building upon itself. But when you read it, there is a chapter that I'm dealing with what's called the city of refuge, coming out of the old city into the new city and going to this. And that's what is Yaakov is doing. He's going to, uh, to Haram. It's a place that is not easy place. Understand that he's not sending him to an easy place. You are not be called to be right now in a comfortable, easy situation. The things are not going to be comfortable. The things are not going to be easy as you go out. But this is a place where God is going to reveal himself and show himself more than other places. If you reach to the place that is called Hamakom, Hamakom, okay? Hamakom hits the place where God is. Hamakom, Vayifga Babakom. You know the word Vayifga? It's the word hit the bull eyes. Jacob hit the bull eye, and it was not an easy place. It was a place that was a stone. The stone is, of course, is a name of the Messiah. He's called the stone. He lay his head upon his stone. The stone, the word heaven. I explained that in the book. The father and the son. He was in the place where the father, and he was in the place the son is. Yes, he's outside the comfort zone. It is outside Be'er Sheva. It's outside the spot. But it's a place God is going to reveal himself. The word fear here, David, is the word Yirah. 
not fear in being scared, yirah fear to come closer. Just as it says in the book of the Deuteronomy, what God asks you, what God requires you, to fear him. The Hebrew word fear, it's something you're going to learn in the yeshiva a little bit later, is the word yirah, to come toward. In English, when you say fear, it's meant to run away. In Hebrew, when you say fear, it's meant to come closer to something. It's the exact opposite of this word. What I want to focus in with you today here is on the word and on the concept of coming out. I spoke about this yesterday, about having an impression, making an impression. Remember what the Torah said here? That when Jacob went out, the glory left with him because he was, he was cleaving to God. He was cleaving to Hashem so much. So here he's going 14 years. He's going to work, work, work. It's all preparation. He's experienced with Rachel and Leah. He's a, he's a, he's a preparation. Rachel and Leah, Leah represented the two appearances in the Messiah. But there is something that is still left to be deal, dealt with, is his encounter with Esau. You see, the entire concept of coming out, you are coming out today from Christianity. I'm going to tell you a secret why. So that you will be tested. You are about to be tested. And here is the test. It's just one sentence, which one test. It's a single, simple test. This is the test that you're going to receive. Will you be able to overcome yourself? Will you be able to come victorious from the encounter from your own clipot, with your own shell, with your own husk, with your own Yetzer Hara? Will you be successful coming into your fullness? When you break Isaf, when you spell, you break the armor of Isaf from your own life, when you break the husk, the husk is different for each and every one of us. But when you break it, you are reaching to something is called fullness. Now, what Apostle Paul said, what Rav Shaul said, he says that the redemption is coming when? When the fullness of the nation is coming in. When the nation will be able to overcome the, the husk of Esau, of Edom, of Christianity, then, then and then only, the Messiah will come and will reveal himself to the house of Jacob. There are two levels that I want you to understand those clipot. One is in the corporate level. Here you are. We're getting it together. We're doing Shacharit. We're doing Kabbalah Shabbat. We're doing Shabbat. We are praying as the Jewish people. That's a corporate clipa. But it is not the main clipa. The main clipa is your individual clipa. The individual clipa of Isa. And isn't it interesting that in this Torah portion, before, prior to, friends, I'm telling you, you need to understand the Besorah according to COVID-19. It's not a theological book. It is a hard book that has to do with you. It's have to do with you, with your battle. And don't tell me today. You don't have a battle. You do have a battle. If you are out of the battle, then that means something is really seriously wrong. You are in a battle, and you are with a battle with an Isaf today. Your ability to come victorious and overcome this battle is what is going to bring Mashiach. And that's where the, the rabbis developed the idea that each and every one of us can bring Mashiach today. How? When you have a victory today, your victory affect the universe. Your personal victory today affect the entire cosmic realm. You don't think that you, you are important to the cosmic realm. You are. Because your victory have in heavenly implication today that you cannot even imagine. When we meet God, he will explain each and every one of us how each victory, how each clipper that you were able to share, how it's affected the heavens, heavens is depending upon you today. 
And here Yaakov came out, and now he's ready to the real thing. The real thing was not to take Rachel to be his wife, or Leah. That was not the big thing. Those represent the tools. Those are representing the two. He has to arm himself and equip himself with tools. All the avodah that he did was not to win Rachel. It is, was for Jacob on benefit so that Jacob will be ready to meet his son. What do we do here? We give you books. We give you studies. We teach you Torah. This is not the end goal. My end goal is not to give you DVDs. And t the end goal is to prepare you spiritually to be able to deal with the self. Let me tell you this in the simplest way. If you get come here and you get knowledge, don't write me, I'm studying your book. Don't tell me your study. Tell me that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. This is not an exercise in academia. If we come here and we teach you, and all what we do, we teach you, but it stay in the mind, and it does not go to an action. It does not go to tangible action. If there is no tangible avodah, if there is no change, we have done nothing. Yaakov is going for 14 years, and he's going to work. The avodah, the labor, the action. Form of and friends, not the thinking, not the knowledge. This is Greek. This is Christianity. Judaism is focused on the mitzvah. Judaism is focused on the avodah, not on the not on just what you know here. He when he says Abraham believed and it's counted him as righteousness in Genesis chapter fifty. What is that? He meant that he walked the walk. A lot of you are coming week in and week, and you are listening to the same. So to the to the messages, convicted messages. My question to you: it is, is, does it lead you to change? That it is transform you. Yaakov is going there and he's going out, but really it's about Yaakov being transformed. After he fight and and work for Leah, and then he work for Rachel, he is changed. And we know what is the big change about him? He is ready to face himself. The main event. The main event is I, I am getting sick and tired. People put the pictures on Facebook. Oh, I got now the collection library of rabbis. I got every Midrash Tamchuma, and I got the Zohar, and I got the Talmud, and people coveting all this knowledge. Who cares? Who cares how much you study? Where is your actions? The proof is in the avodah. The proof is in the preparation. The proof is in the fact that you are now ready, ready to face Esau in your own life. Don't talk to me about knowledge. Are you ready to face Esau? And here in this Torah portion, Yaakov is about to face Esau before he physically meet Esau. Who does he meet? Look at this. Spiritual victory had to come before physical victory. Write it yourself in the note. You want physical victories in your life? First, you need to have a spiritual victory over your clipboard. You're dealing with the sins of the flesh? Ladies and gentlemen, if you're dealing with the sin of the flesh, that means that there is some sin of the spirit that have to be dealt with. This is important. In the flesh, that means that a spiritual victory has to be attained first. And this is exactly the formula that we see here with, his, with Yaakov. Yaakov had to go to a spiritual battle in chapter 32 before meeting Yaakov, Esau in chapter 33 for a physical victory. The physical victory already took place. Why? Because there was a spiritual victory. Look at with me. Let's look together at the text, what it says. It says, and let's read together, this is the first battle. That, that's where the real battle is won. It says, 
And Jacob was left alone, and there was wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was strained as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. And he says, I will not let you go, except you bless me. And he says to him, what is your name? And he says, my name is Jacob. And he said, your name will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you are striven with God and with man, and you have prevailed. Let me tell you something. When you're going through a spiritual battle, when you go through a spiritual victory, when you're going through this, your name will be changed and it will be evident to those around you. Remember that we said that the person coming out, he's making an impression on the world around him. What does it mean to make an impression on the world around you? It means that they look upon you and they say, wow, this person has really changed. He is yet to deal physically with his self, but he see a man, and one who appears as a man, and he is going to wrestle with him. And the question is, who was this man that Yaakov was wrestling with? Who was this person that Yaakov was wrestling with? The rabbis of Israel tell us who was this man, and Hiskuni says, a man began to wrestle with him was the man, was the angel who has assumed the form of a human being. The angel who is called Esau's protective power had come to prevent Jacob from escaping from Esau. He realized soon that God assurances to Yaakov were strong enough to protect him against being harmed by Esau. Are you hearing what I am telling you? There was an angel of Esau that he had to deal with. It's the spiritual clipper of Esau. He had to deal with the spiritual issue of dealing with Esau. Some of you today, you try to fix the physical things in your life. I have an addiction. I have a problem. I have this. I have that. But you have to understand you are not wrestling against flesh and blood. That's what the New Covenant Scripture is telling us here. You are not wrestling against flesh and blood. And before he could face, and be, that's when the battle won. You are not winning your battles on a physical level. You are winning your battle in a spiritual level. The question is, how do we win these battles? Look at this. This is absolutely incredible. It says that the battle was, what is the Torah says? Vayeavek ish imo. And a man, wrestled, a, 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 a man wrestled with him. If you take this term, you take this word, look what you get. It's equivalent in Hebrew to 427, which is equivalent to the word Esav and Edom. There is no doubt, here, ladies and gentlemen, there is no doubt who we is dealing with, who is fighting with. He is fighting against the spirit of his son. Yaakov, our father, have a spiritual battle against the, the spirit of his son. Some of you today dealing with things physically. And of course, they are always manifesting physically. But you look at those things and you're dealing with them physically physically, but you're not dealing with the spiritual. The spiritual thing, he is dealing with the spirit of Esau. And look, he ended up receiving blessing from this. He ended up, if you overcome this spiritual battle, you will be able to take from this angel of Esau, even in Esau, even in a struggle, even in a battle, there is something good that's going to come over it if you will be able to extract those things. And the question, are you willing to extract those things? Are you willing to go through some sort of a level of extraction? So you will be able to take the battle and overcome them and become victorious to the point that you are changed, to the point that you are being transformed. And that is what happened here. How did Esau is fighting? 
Esau is fighting in a very dirty way. Friends, he is fighting in a very dirty way. He does not say here in the text that they fought. That is not what it says. Look at the holy tongue with me. What is the word that is used in the holy tongue? Is the word vayavek, and it's talking about the word wrestling. The word vayavek is from the word wrestle. They are wrestling, but it is more than this. You need to understand Esau strategy. You need to understand how you overcome those clipot. The word yeavek, friends, it is rooted. Here we go. It is rooted in the Hebrew word avak. You want to know what avak is? Avak is come from the Hebrew word dust. Dust. Have you ever been like in some dusty road and the cloud of dust coming to the point that it is becoming cloudy? Look what the rabbis of Israel said. He said, it is written by avak. Because it is come from the word dust. Because Esau have a strategy to send dust to your eyes. What does it mean? To send dust to the eyes so that you will be blinded into the fight. You will be blinded into the fight. The job of Esau in the world is to blind you. You need to understand what is it. He's not finding fair. He's not finding, he's not fighting in a clean way. Not at all. No way. He is sending things that cloud us. What is the type of things that are clouding us today? Anything that is a distraction in your life god is giving me and my wife a word for 5781 and i pray that the holy spirit will give you the same word the word is declutter and simplify your life declutter and simplify remove the thing that are causing you and weighing you down in your life this is the dust this is it it's like when he's coming to the bottle instead of punching himself he is shaking the ground to give a cloud so that Esau will not be able to see so that excuse me, so that Yaakov will not be able to see and that's what the meaning of the word for Yavek. But what did he say that Yaakov did? He did not let go. It says here in the text again. He says, and Yaakov did not let go until he received the blessing. What does it mean? Until he will come victorious from the battle. He will not let go until he extract, extract the klipa from the klipa, the goodness in this battle. It should not be a surprise for anybody here that the rabbis of Israel, Rashi says that he is indeed fighting against Satan himself. He's fighting against Satan, against the evil inclination. He's a battle inside Yaakov. Yaakov that resemble Esau. The Yaakov that run away from Esau. And the Yaakov is going to face Esau. There are two Jacobs today. Just like there is two praise, that there are two Miriams, there are two Bobs. There is the, your image of the fullness in Jacob, and there is your image in the fullness that is found in Esau. In each one of you, there are two. And here he says, I'm not going to let go until I extract from you the thing that will help me. To break the clipper. And that's why the rabbi said, he opened the discussion saying, Take, I pray you, blessing. And they brought to you when Yaakov saw the accuser, Hasatan, Satan himself that night, who is wrestled with him in the passage of your book, he saw him in the image of Esau, but did not recognize him until dawn rose. As soon as the dawn rose, he saw him, and he saw his face both visible and concealed. He viewed his image that was like the image of Esau, and immediately realized that the minister of Esau, namely, I'm not pronouncing the name, he stuck in, as it is written, and he said, let me go 
for the day breaks. And the, the French restored it because he did the right, sing praise to the Holy One, blessed be he. Therefore he says for the day break. He held on until the day break. What is the day break? The day of salvation. Yeshua says those will be saved, those who will be holding on till the end. Things are going to come right now to your life. Those trials that you're going to let go. The second you walk away from the battle, the second you walk, ease of going winning your life. The second that you just see the cloud and you're not going to go to the cloud of, of ashes and you're just going back off, ease of have won. It's called being passive. Many of you today are being passive. You're being passive because you're scared to get your hands dirty, to get into a battle. But you are in a spiritual battle today. And this spiritual battle is great and you have to overcome it. But you need to go through the avak and hold on and say, I am not letting go. I am not letting go until I receive this blessing. Until my clipper come off. And in that moment, Jacob's name was. Israel. His name was changed to Israel. That's when Yaakov Klippot started to shed. More than anything else, friend, God desire for you in these last days. If you don't understand what God is doing in the world with the virus, you need to understand He is giving you a chance to remind you to go inside the cloud of dust. Get your hand in your hand into the battle again. Get yourself into the game again. It is not over. And God wants you today to overcome those great and awesome clipot. And the only way it's going to happen is if you yourself are willing to go to battle. Just like David Ben-Gurion said, we go to the battlefield in order for us to have peace. Abba, in the name of Yeshua, we bless your name for the spiritual battle that Yaakov taught us to have. The work of the fathers is assigned to the son. The very next chapter, he deals physically with the physical problem, which is Esau himself. God will help you to deal with the physical only when the spiritual side of things get whole in your life. May you be strengthened in these days. Friends, help us with the good news, COVID-19. Spread the word around. I hope you've been blessed by the Shiro today. I got to run to another Shiro Torah with my Talmidim. God bless you. Check us out, and we love you. We believe that you are overcoming the battles today. Make sure that whatever you receive from us here at Avatami Ministries, you put it into use spiritually. God bless you. Little.